Chris, I, I remember we ended last time with uh, with our social media nomenclatures, but let's start with that this time. So what is yours? Okay, I use Connors 934, C-O-N-N-O-R-S 934, I, whatever system. All right. And then I am a Scrappy Maker. So Instagram, Twitter, all of those. And then we also have a lot set up for Scrappy Circuits. So if you search Scrappy Circuits on Instagram and Twitter, you'll find out more about us and what we do. And we're both educators, or both, um, well, Scrappy educators. We, we kind of, we love inventing, we love Make Magazine, we love taking things apart, and we love teaching other kids to do that. And we also love taking out as many prerequisites in that path as possible. So one that's often in that path is expense. I mean, you can go on Amazon and search STEM toys and find toys that are aimed for kids that are hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. So our Scrappy Circuits ethos is really about taking apart common items, learning how they work, and then also remixing them into other items that can work for you. So we've done a few of these. Uh, the first one was about the five core bricks, which is kind of something that's needed for all of our projects that we're doing. It's where you take apart an LED tea light, like I have one up, oh, here we go, like this. Take apart an LED tea light and you have your three volt battery, you have your LED, and then we also make three switches and those are the five core bricks. So everything is on our website, scrappycircuits.com, if you're just kind of catching up with us. But one of those five um, core bricks is the push switch, which is a really simple switch our whole system uses binder clips as terminals. So electricity would be going into this binder clip and then leaving this binder clip. And this switch rests in an off position. So you would push this down and it would turn your switch on, the paper clip would touch the binder clip and then you would let go, excuse me, and that would turn your switch off. We're gonna kind of do something that's a, the opposite or inverse of that. So Chris, what are we building today? Well, we're using Close pins. Close and pins. These are good clippy things. They have a spring and two pieces of wood, and they're normally closed on this end and normally open on the other. Very nice. And any type of close pin will work for what we are doing. Um, you can use, I have these paper ones, or not paper ones, sorry, wooden ones. I even have, where is it? I have smaller wooden ones. I just misplaced them. Up oh, here it is. I have some smaller wooden ones. These would work. Plastic ones, any type of clothespin will work because we actually want the clothespin itself, or at least the majority, except for the spring part, to be the insulator. And most of them are they made, are out, made of insulating, out of insulating items. I got a little feedback there for a moment. Hopefully Sorry. you guys didn't hear that. No, no, no. Um, so I'm going to be using this clothespin. Chris has some of the same size, but any size will work, wood, plastic, anything like that. And the idea with this switch is that it rests in the on position. So the opposite of our push switch. Push switch rests in the off position. You actually have to apply force to turn your circuit on. This is going to be one where it rests on and you actually have to apply force to turn it off. So here's a example of a clothespin switch. And you can see we have our two terminals and we have some aluminum foil going to the different parts or mouths of the, trying to get a good, there we go. I think that's a good view um, of the clothespin. And then when you push it, it turns off. When you release, it turns on. So it rests in that on position. Uh, we were talking yesterday and sorry for anyone that went uh, to make yesterday looking for scrappy circuits and found some other, um, some other content, which we watched and was really interesting. Um, there's a little mix up of the schedule. So, but Chris and I got off to a false start and talked about closed pin switches for a little bit yesterday. And Chris, you had some awesome ideas on how closed pin switches can be used. Um, let me show you what I got here. So these are some of the things that I built in experimentation yesterday. And you can control the spin of a motor or um, an LED. And this is a, some of the switches right here. So this one is 
connecting when it's closed. And then this other one will connect when it's closed or when it's open. Right now, the uh, LED circuit that I had running yesterday is not going. So I'm going to have to do some troubleshooting to get this working. And then I also set up a system where I could connect one switch to a set of binders and another switch. To set of binders. Nice. And uh, I do like Chris and something we haven't talked about yet, but the whole scrappy circuits system really works with that three volt battery, which is not a lot of electricity. And there's a plus and a minus to that. It's safe. You're not going to shock yourself by touching it in an incorrect manner or really uh, hooking something up in an incorrect manner. But one of the things that we'll probably do at some point is we have a few action bricks. Those are the bricks that actually perform a task. And the one is the LED light. And that's really the only one we've talked on about on these, um, these uh, oh, the buzzer. webinars, whatever you want to call them. But you have a motor there. So can you talk about the motor a little bit and how that so works? This I actually, let me go grab another set of motors that I was using. So I built the circuit so that it would turn on and I tried all of these motors here and it was not able to spin any of these. This one is a gear motor. This one is a solar motor came out of some kit. And then uh, these other ones with different values. But the one that actually worked was this one that I pulled out of an optical drive, CD player or something like that. And so this little motor right here um, will, will work with a 3V, 3 volt fan system. So, Very nice. Yeah, that, I found the same thing that for our system, these little three volt motors is what I always call them, uh, commonly found in CD and DVD guys. players, that they work the best. Uh, if anyone is Facebook friends with me, you see every like month or so I, I post, does anyone have any CDs or CD <laughs> players they're trying to get rid of? Because I would love to take them. And I have like a small collection of those motors because they work perfectly for scrappy circuits. So it's just another action brick, another brick that's going to perform a task. But today is focused on switches, which are my favorite part of a circuit because they're how humans control electricity. It's kind of like, I always think of the Jungle Book and they're trying to learn how to control fire and, and the power of controlling fire. And I feel like switches are the power of controlling electricity, which is something I love. So are we ready to build, Chris? Yeah. All right. So we have kind of this format we've come up with is, is almost Chris and I don't talk uh, much during the week and we kind of build our versions of the same idea. And the purpose of that is not because uh, we're trying to avoid each other. <laughs> well, we actually live in different places and we live in different places. And, and we really want to show our, our, our independent process. We start at the same spot, but we ended up in different spots. And we want to show that process and really show, um, you know, how you can be innovative because part of Scrappy Circuits is using what you have in your house. So you might be like, oh, I have some aluminum foil tape. Let me use that. Oh, I don't. So I'm going to have to steal some of my parents' aluminum foil. Um, so whatever you have lying around, whatever idea sparks you the most is the one you can make or some hybrid of the two, which is and totally. No, I'm a big fan of the aluminum tape, which I'm calling scrappy tape now. Nice. I like it. And I find this is really good because you just got to peel the backing off and then it just sticks and it's a nice conductor. It's not a great conductor, but it'll, it'll do the job. Mm -hmm. And same with aluminum foil. I mean, I, I'm, I use aluminum foil a lot. I'll, I've, I've, I've uh, reinforced it with some packing tape at times, and I found that it works really well then. It's not for the sticky element, but just because aluminum foil is fragile and can rip. But if you kind of twist and wrap, uh, it can do a pretty good job. These, these things will sometimes slide off. I don't want to forcefully do it because it's hard to fix, but you could do, you could 
you know, it's pretty reliable and it's pretty abundant. I mean, I, I remember as a kid, um, I was always allowed to go to my dad's workshop and just kind of take any junk apart, but it was the expensive materials and tools that he really would get mad at me if I messed up. So I kind of always tinkered with the, the scrappy scraps and the junk. And then that's kind of informed me as a teacher too. So I'm going to get started. I'm going to take a clothespin and I'm going to wrap some aluminum foil around the mouth. I'm going to be careful not to touch the metal spring because that will bridge my connection and short so out I've my got clip. a uh, workaround for that. I'm okay, let's hear it. clear tape over the um, spring. Okay. So just use clear tape as an insulator that keeps any connection from happening between the conductor and the spring. I like it. I like it. And I, found I suppose you only really have to do it on one, one side of the spring, but if you do it on both. As Chris is doing that, I'm going to keep wrapping mine. Uh, a good tight wrap is important. And actually, as I'm doing this, if you feel like taking your clothespin apart to get that extra tight wrap, you totally can. I'm, I'm leaving it on. And then now what I'm going to do is twist the remainder, this part of my aluminum foil. So the direction I was wrapping in, I'm going to keep twisting in that direction. And that just allows electricity to travel a little bit, uh, a smoother path because the aluminum foil is touching itself. And I'm also going to kind of pinch it down. So I have a nice tight connection on the wood just so it's a little stronger. And then also I'm going to open my clothespin up and you see that groove that's in the bottom part, but not in the top. That's going to help hold everything together. So I'm just going to take this little screwdriver and make sure I kind of have the aluminum foil as against the wood as possible, not for any electrical purpose, but just for more of a structural one. All right, so I'm gonna work on the other one, Chris, and I'm gonna throw you the, uh, okay. the spotlight. So while you let do... me see if I can. So I'm gonna take a little piece of tape and put it around the spring. It, as the, Paper clip opens and closes. This area is going to flex, so it won't hold forever. But actually, what you really want is you want to create an insulation between the spring and the tape that's above it. And then we'll take some scrappy tape, which is basically any tape that's a conductor. So it could be copper, it could be aluminum. I just like having the adhesive on the back. It makes things easier. And then take that and put it in the mouth of the clothespin and bring it along down the end. And then I'm tucking it into the back of the clothespin and sort of I haven't made up my mind whether having a, a little loose tab is not a bad idea. So that might be a feature that you want or not, but I don't think you want it to go all the way into the spring. So I'm gonna end up just shortening this. And then I'll do that to both sides and ends up like this one. So this one is aluminum tape along each of the sides of the clip with an insulator in between. Very nice. So I have mine finished. It looks like a, an alien. Take me to your leader. So you can see I have the two different parts of the mouth wrapped in aluminum foil and the excess going over there. And I'll get a little closer to show that the foil does not touch the metal spring, which is important. Um, but like I, I kind of said in the beginning, Chris and I are educators, problems 
are learning. You know, if you have a problem, you problem solve it, you're learning more. So uh, if I was in the classroom, I would mention that once, but I wouldn't really spend a lot of time on it because I'd want kids to experience that problem and overcome that problem and really just engage in that learning process. So the next step for this is going to be to cut a brick, which is the little piece of cardboard. And I'm just gonna hot glue it on. And then as you can tell from here, just have each of these arms uh, extend to a different side and then connect with a binder clip to create that terminal. So I'm gonna do that on my end. Let's see if I have a, yeah, it's too small. So I'm gonna the, find a piece of cardboard. The piece that we're in right now is to how to connect it to something else, how to build the connection, right? Mm -hmm. And what I've done is I've set up some wire that I harvested out of an ethernet cable. So ethernet cables can have braided wire or they can have a solid core wire. For these kinds of circuits, it's super useful to have the braided because it's more flexible and more great. And so what I've done is I've just taken one of the twisted pairs and stripped the ends off. And then I will tape it into the clip. So another thing that I'm doing is I'm sending the wire through the spring as a strain relief. And what that does is it makes it likely less likely for the wires to get pulled off. And so we've got mm -hmm. and the other one is going to go okay. Now I gotta strip the back again. It's always an adventure. So apparently all tools are just extensions of people's bodies. We need a more precise finger, so let's put this tool is going to come. I'm going to try it like this. So as you're doing that, Chris, I'm just gonna take the spotlight real quick because for my version, the um the clothespin is attached with some hot glue to the brick. So I have my hot glue gun. I have my bricks. So I'm just going to lay a quick thread of some hot glue. But I just turned on the hot glue gun, so it's not quite hot. It's more like mild glue right now. And just going to put this down and let that dry as you continue. So and I've got my Tape peeled, and then I'm going to tape the wire onto the And the more times you do this, the more it'll come out the way you want. Mm -hmm. What's and nice about the whole started creating these little uh, connector bricks. So I'd take a piece of cardboard about the side and a couple of these pieces of tape and a couple of binders. And then you can connect a couple of things to this clip or this brick. Thanks. Well, one thing I was uh, about to say, Chris, is one of the things I like about scrappy circuits, too, is we really work with circuits that are in what's called series, meaning the electricity kind of has like a clear path. And it might go to like a some junction point like uh, your building. But overall, it's really going to you're going to see the battery. You're going to see the action brick. You're going to see the switch. And it'll be very easy to understand. And I know... Um, you know, when we're all heading down our path of tinkering and understanding invention literacy, 
there was an early phase where we probably opened something up and looked at a circuit board and said, gosh, what is happening here? Um, because those circuits are not going to be in series, or at least usually are not, because there's a lot happening. They're all on a circuit board. Things are soldering. Connections are being made on both sides of the circuit board. So scrappy circuits is really something that is visually uh, understanding, which is or easy to understand once you look at it, which is nice. So I have my brick that I am. Everything is dried. So I'm actually going to take my binder clips, our terminals. And even though I have a lot of foil, there's probably going to be a strong connection. I'm going to sand the mouth of it a little bit. And that just means I always take my uh, like drywall sanding block and just sand the mouth like this. I get a little closer, but it would uh, leave some weird dust on my laptop. I did that before. I just open the mouth and sand until... I get a little bit of the black paint off. You can kind of see some gray there. So I'm just going to do that to my two bricks. How, uh, how's your build coming along, Chris? All right. I've got my clip so that it goes to one of these connector bricks. Okay. And so now I'd like to put it into the circuit. So this one's just holding the battery, which is similar to the battery brick, which is, is similar to that, but using the clothespin for it. You know, Chris, while we're watching you, one thing I realized I don't think we talked about are some of the applications of a switch that rests in the on position. Mm -hmm. So we were, we were talking about that yesterday. Um, what are some things that come to your mind when you think of a switch that rests on some different applications and uses for that? Let's see. Well, there's like clicky toggle buttons. Um, when you flip a, light switch up or down what do you what do you got for examples so when i think of them i don't know why maybe it's my uh my youth of reading hardy boys and watching macgyver but i always think of like alarms and trip switches mm -hmm. so when i think of a clothespin i think of, or a clothespin switch like this i think of how you could kind of take and i'm looking for a heavy object i don't really have one so you could take an object and rest it on this back end and that would cause the switch to stay open. So with that pressure not applied by your hand, but by an object, it would rest in the off position. But as soon as that object is removed, it would click and turn on to the on position. So if you kind of put a book bag on top of this and then somebody picked up that book bag, then all of a sudden your alarm would go off. Another thing too is I, uh, this is something I use in my Dewey MacBook, but turning a clothespin into a tripwire switch. So if you take a little piece of cardboard, just with a hole on it, and then I just have some wire, you can use wire, string, anything like that. And you put that cardboard into the mouth of your clothespin switch. Now it's going to rest in the off position. So if something pulls on this string, then it will turn on. So this string or wire could be attached to a doorknob it could be attached to the low level when somebody walks by they can accidentally kick it and pull it out there's a lot of uh there's a lot of different options and and uses for kind of a tripwire switch like this but i thought that was a, a cool way of doing it so if you just pull it out then it turns on like that I do see, Chris, we have a question. What is the second clothespin doing in Chris's so example? So in this one here, right? So this one I'm using as a battery holder. Uh, and then this one is the clothespin switch that we just made. So when I open it a little bit, it breaks the circuit. And when I push it all the way open, it also... I think we can't see the the closed and oh, switch. Yep, there. there. Perfect. Try that. All right. So this one is holding the battery and this one is the switch. And if it's 
closed like this, then the circuit is connected. And if it's open, then the circuit is open. And then if it's pushed all the way open, then the circuit is closed. Very good. And then I can do that same technique where if I take a, uh, an insulator and put it in here, then the circuit doesn't complete. And any insulator will work. I mean, I did that little piece of cardboard, but uh, most things are insulators. So most things can be stuck inside that clothespin switch as long as it fits. And then when it's pulled out, when that mechanical movement happens, it turns your switch on, which is awesome. So I'm going to finish up by adding my sanded binder clips to the foil, to the edge there. Make sure I get a nice connection. I don't want my clip to really clip the cardboard and overpass the uh, foil. I really want it to connect to the foil. All right. And then I'm going to build, I have a buzzer brick and a battery brick right here. So buzzer brick, we made with these, uh, I think the second week second one of these that we did. And then the battery brick, which is part of those five core bricks that we made the first week. I'm gonna hook these up with some alligator clips and then we'll see if the closed pin switch is working. All right. And then let me see if I can... The wire that I'm using on the motor needed to be a solid core wire because it was going into this fitting at the end of the wire. So I found this old telephone wire and mm -hmm. I took the wire into the this little a fitting that would go onto a circuit. I hear your. Um, yeah, sorry, I interrupted sorry. you there. That's good. And so I get my connector, and then let me see if I can get an over connector. So, Chris, a little off topic. But uh, I was experimenting a lot with those three volt molded motors yep. and I built a lot of uh, cardboard little little gears and cams to see if I can uh, try and get some more movement out of them. They don't work great because they're not that strong. They're you know only meant to spin a light CD. So if you're putting a heavy load on it, they, they tend to fail, but you can have fun. So I built a, built a few of these guys and uh, you got them spinning, you know. They also drain batteries quickly, which is unfortunate because uh, you'll be tinkering, you'll be you'll be like, you know, problem solving, and you're getting closer to a great solution, and then all of a sudden your great solution isn't working, and you're confused. But it's more because that that, that three volt battery is being drained quickly of uh, the electricity, unlike an LED light, which drains it very very slowly. So I got my buzzer brick all hooked up. Let me add it to my clothespin switch. And as soon as I hook it up, if it's working, and it's not, hmm. um, you should hear it buzzing. Now, problem solving is part of scrappy circuits. This is not a failure. This is just a step in the process. Look at that. It just needed some motivation. Just some verbal motivation is what fixed it. Um, but, you know, we, we talk about all the time how you really have to check all the points of connection. You take your circuit, you simplify it as much as possible. You get it working in that simplest state, and then you build it back to your original circuit one piece at a time. So let's see. I think just one of my alligator clips was just uh, biting a little loosely, maybe. Yep. Okay. So now we're resting on. But when it's open, it's off, on. Sounds like a little chihuahua. That's great. And then as we're talking, so we don't hear the world's most annoying sound in the world, I'm going to put this little 
tag in there. So now it's resting in the off state because of that little insulator. But then, like I said, anything pulls that wire, it turns on. So a fun switch, a fun switch with a lot of uses. It doesn't all have to be about uh, alarms and security, but I'm sure you could use this in some assistive ways, some creative ways, some home automation ways. A uh, switch that rests on is, I think, a, a valuable switch in the invention literacy process. That's good. How's yours coming along? Uh, I'm working on the motor and well, first I'd like to just get the motor working. So as Chris is problem solving, one of the things we uh, talked about is uh, maybe asking some input as far as ideas for next week. We're kind of going to keep doing these weekly and we have a bunch of ideas. It's not because the well is dry, but we really um, scratch like the circuit. And, people are interested in. Yeah, we want to find out what people are interested in. Um, and Scrappy Circuits is really, the whole idea is a community of makers. And I've learned a lot from different people using the hashtag Scrappy Circuits on social media and seeing their builds. And I'll tell you, everyone's different. Everyone has their own set of uh, materials and skills, and it's awesome to see. So either send Chris a message, myself a message, uh, make a message, or even leave it in the comments of this video with any ideas you might have. And, uh, and we'd love to hear them. We'd love to, to run with them next week. So. That sounds great. I'm not sure that I'm going to get this immediately. Okay. Well, the one thing too, I was thinking I haven't mentioned is the whole scrappy circuits uh, system community is right now living on a website, scrappycircuits.com. But there's a lot more to it. Um, and then all that is going to be in book ultimately. So if you go to scrappycircuits.com, you will see that there's a, um, a list to sign up for an email list. Because our goal and our goal in the near future is to put this as a book. It already is a, a, you know, a Google Doc, I'll say. But to get that designed and as a book and constructing Modern Knowledge Press is going to put it out and launch a Kickstarter to, uh, to really spread the word of Scrappy Circuits and make, make it so it's easier for more educators to teach kids invention literacy. Uh, invention literacy is a term uh, coined by Jay Silver, who invented the Makey Makey. And it's really about how we teach literacy to kids. Not every kid is going to be a writer but we teach them grammar. We teach them the basics of literacy uh, and writing so they can communicate in some way at some point or choose that as their career when they get older. And he's a big advocate of teaching kids invention literacy to teach them the basics of invention. So maybe they go in that direction when they're older, maybe not, or maybe when they're 40 and they're uh, fixing a garbage disposal, they're like, oh, I remember from scrappy circuits that what the positive terminal does, what the negative terminal does and so on. So really kind of pushing for this as a, as a new direction in education, either from parents, from libraries, community centers, schools, whatever it might be, but making it as simple as possible for those educators and uh, leaders to, to teach about invention literacy. And that's the whole idea and goal of Scrappy Circuit. So if you can find us on all the social media, go to scrappycircuits.com and sign up for our email list. And hopefully in the near future, you hear from us about that Kickstarter launching. So any, uh, any closing words, Mr. Connor? Well, I think just enjoy the process and design things and solve problems and do things that are important to you. Exactly. All right. So we look forward to hearing from everyone. We look forward to hearing some creative ideas for next week. And we look forward to being back next week and, uh, and keep building. So thank you so much. Again, Mike Carroll at Chris Scrappy Connors. Maker. And Chris, Chris Connors, Connors934. I got it. All right. Thanks so much. And we'll see you next week. All right, everyone. Take care.